morning, everybody. Uh, I think, Sunil, your presentation was brilliant. Uh, it's fantastic to see that you have such a kick-ass marketing team to be able to dole out those creatives generation to generation. Uh, like we say, we are a country of roti, kapra, makan. I think we've done the kapra bit of it. I will try to touch upon roti. And as proudly we can say, and uh, feel really proud to say this, and I mean, you know, when I was told to demonstrate reviving goodness, agility, health, taste, I was like, what better than doing it in this year, which is the International Year of Millet 2023. And I think it's a big, big, big move for India, where it's actually registered as UN as the International Year of Millet. And to just put some perspective into it, right, like when we as a country demonstrate agility, we demonstrate agility on so many fronts. I think the war footing that we've been at in the last 75 years has been commendable. So just to quickly take you all through that, and, um, and I think for me why this, this session is very iconic is because like I said, right, A, it's the International Year of Millet. B, we have been, we are now a part of a portfolio which sold Desh Ka Namak, then Desh Ki Chai, and today's Desh Ke Millets. And I don't think it gets endorsed better than the government doing it. So quickly on to this. You might be wondering, I spoke about kapda, I spoke about roti, what is this tap doing on the screen, right? This tap could mean a lot of things for any of us. I mean, it could just be a tap. It could be a tap which has no water coming out of it. But this is the truth. I think this is what we're all facing today. This is the India, this is the world that we're living in. We are running out of water and but, what is, and in hence, it's important for us not to look at the sad side of the whole story, but just look at how do you make opportunity out of this adversity. We are running out of water, uh, groundwater. We are running, we, there is a huge environmental shift happening. How do we look at this opportunity and make a change in the way, the way we eat? So quickly to throw some stats back at you all. Uh, India is, I mean, Bangalore's run out of groundwater. That's where I come from. Bombay ran out of groundwater two years ago. India's water demand is projected to be twice the available of the supply by 2030. So we are already in a situation that we need to work around. So where Tata Soulful demonstrated agility in these times, to any of you, this slide could look extremely morbid or scary. But that's not scary because this is not something which is to worry about in entirety, it is nature taking its course. It's about how we customize ourselves to the changing times and see the way we bring about a change to sustain. So, for example, I think a lot of us for the longest have been eating rice and wheat. Have we ever thought about the fact that why do we eat rice and wheat? We eat rice and wheat because many decades ago, it was about hunger satisfaction in our country. And hunger satisfaction and hence the Green Revolution came about and hence we started eating rice and wheat. Today, it's not about hunger satisfaction. We need to be proud that we've come a really long way, but what we are today combating is nutrition satisfaction. And nutrition satisfaction along with the changes the environment is seeing, what we need to be more accustomed to is, there is a huge shift happening and we see torrential rainfalls, we see extreme rain, we see extreme winter. How do we customize ourselves for this and how do we actually bring about the way a change in the way we eat, and that's where I started that if three things change in our day-to-day -day life, roti, kapra, and makan, we truly can bring about a more sustainable, simple life. While all of this sounds very, very heavy, let me just th throw some stats at you, right? Why millets and why is it such an important year? This is an ancient grain which truly talks the walk that I'm talking about. It is a grain which was believed by our forefathers. It is a grain which was eaten by our grandparents. It's a grain which was eaten by farmers. And it is absolutely a fit for today and the situation that we are in. It truly talks about the India story. It talks about how India can bring about a change in the way we eat and in the way the, globally, uh, in the, way the world eats. So just to give you a few stats of why we need to change from when we ate rice, how we need to change the way we eat, how we need to move forward, one kg of rice, which gets consumed, just some trivia, which gets consumed in any given household, probably in four days, or I'm sorry, in two days, requires 4,000 liters of water from the ground. Now, like I said, India, Bangalore's run out of groundwater, Bombay's run out of groundwater, Delhi's running out of groundwater, 
and 4,000 liters of water, just to give you all a perspective, would be, have you all seen those tankers which stand outside our colonies? It's two tankers of water just to grow one kg of rice, which is consumed in probably a day and a half to two. While one kg of ragi requires only 400 liters of water, and that is from the sky. And one kg of ragi gets consumed over five to six days in any household, because these are complex carbs. It keeps you full for longer. It gives you a lot more energy. While there is a lot of chatter happening, what is more relevant for all of us is, hence this indigenous grain, this super grain is not just super food, it is actually smart food. And why is it smart food? As I go through my presentation, we'll be able to connect the dots. Because it's good for you, purely because of the nutritional benefits that it has. It is good for the planet, like I said, for the amount of water it consumes. And most importantly, we are a 75% agrarian economy. We are talking about the GDP coming up. We are talking about the telecom revolution. We are talking about the internet generation. But have we thought about what will happen to our economy if the way the weather changes are happening, if global warming is not addressed in the right way to customize the farmer to be able to grow crops which can grow across all seasons and are not going to be left, make him, he's not going to be left to the, uh, he's not going to be left at the mercy of unpredictability, right? So hence, these grains are absolutely indigenous. Now, there's a lot of chatter internationally of millets. Millets are good for you. There's Ruchuta, uh, Ruchuta Devekar talking about millets. There's Milan Soman talking about millets. What are millets? Millets are nothing. They are just the simple grains that we all grew up eating. It's ragi, jawar, nachni, bajra, sorghum. These are all general grains. But what was more important, while everybody today, thanks to the government, is understanding a lot more about it, was to A, create the awareness, but bring about a change in truly in the consumer's life. And like I said, and that's when the UN came into the picture and said that let's start creating this noise, let's start creating this awareness. And that's when we came into the picture and said, while everybody knows that you know millets are good for you, where the barrier sits today is that millets are good for me, they are great, they're good for the farmer, but is my merely care. You know, how am I going to consume this grain? It's, it's very, very difficult, right? Because I have to soak it, I have to, I'm not able to make art out of it, a chapati doesn't come out of it, and all of that. So if you really want the consumer to be able to adapt into the chatter which is going on, into the entire propaganda which is going on, it was important to step in and make these millets mainstream and offer it to the consumer in a format which the consumer wants, which the consumer appreciates. So it was about making high priority products, making products at an affordable price point. Most important, we make it with an ease of accessibility. I will explain that a little more to you all. And ensuring, most importantly, that millets are cool. Let me give you a simple example, right? We come from a generation where today we love to listen to Bhangra music, but we like it with a little bit of a remix. We love to wear our kurtis, but we like to wear it with our jeans. We are that generation who wants the grounding and the good of the old, but who wants it in a format which is cool and today. And that's where we come in and we said that this is where we make millets mainstream. And that's a true demonstration that we felt was for agility. While our marketing could be agile, while our processes could be agile, while the way we think could be agile, but if we wanted to make a true difference to the India story, agility needed to be demonstrated this way, and that's how we make, bring millets to the forefront. It was about reviving these ancient grains in a modern format. Taking the grain, processing it, putting it in form factors, which today's consumer understands, today's urban progressive consumer understands. So actually taking it in forms of putting it like in, in the form of breakfast cereals, making it snacks for kids, making it maybe a convenient masaledar snack, or probably making it a healthy beverage, but all of it which is convenient and making these, this ancient age old grain into a form and exactly with ingredients that your grandma would approve, but in a format that you would also approve, because your taste also matters. So the two consumer groups, and why I'm gonna talk about it is, you know, while we talk about agility, we talk about reviving things, what we tend to forget is who is the core of all of this. The core of all of this is the consumer. And if you're not gonna keep the consumer in mind, and if you're going to come, come up with formats which the consumer doesn't understand and at what point of their life it fits in, none of this, the rubber will never meet the road. 
And the consumer that we want, we decided to speak to was twofold. One was the mother, who is truly bringing about a change, who cares for what her child eats, who cares for what goes into the child's mouth, and is at that cusp where is bringing about a change in the way her child eats and her entire household eats. Second was the young adult, who is now an early jobber, who's come out of his home, who's taken charge of his own nutrition, who is now understanding that he needs to watch what he eats because, you know, gone are the days, and pardon me for saying this, where you can have a binge night and go for a meeting without a hangover. You know, those days are over. You want to aspire to look nice. Gym membership to le liya hai, but gym jane ko time nahi hai. Haan, company HR has sent an email saying marathon is happening in two months. All the intent is to run, but let me just start by putting some good food in my mouth. And I think it's fair, right? Because we are all in that race where we want to do something better. We aspire to do better. And I think one big shift that happens when we have a bet, I mean, of course, we all want to buy a better car. We want to move into a better home. Those are much more long-term decisions. But if we are able to just bring about a change in the way we eat, somewhere passively, it makes us feel a little better. And it also makes us feel that we are on that journey of fitness. And probably we are passive health, uh, passive health seekers. While we were in the journey of nutrition and we are deep rooted with millets, best quality ingredients, great delivery of nutrition, I mean, that's a given. There is no two ways about it. But we are in a country which is absolutely paramount about taste. Taste is the most important thing. Taste nahi hai, to kuch nahi hai. You cannot give brown color cardboard to people and expect them to eat it and buy it every day. You're not going to see baskets fill up. And that's where we said, while we're reaching the right consumer, we're right, reaching the right moment of consumption, we are giving the right amount of nutrition, we are delivering, I mean, uh, we are delivering benefits, which are health benefits that you can see. We're making it look cool. We are actually uh, able to understand the consumer and move into his life. What was also important was to keep it taste first and health forward. And that's how India rolls. You give them something tasty, you give it to them at accessible places, and then you start talking about health, it fits in very, very well. But if I'm going to first thing come and tell you it's a white and green color pack, it's healthy, hai, nahi khaoge, to ambulance aa jayega. Trust me, it's not sustainable in our day-to-day -day life. And as we all are aware, in the FMCG LUP place, which is the low unit price point products, what is important is for us to create that accessibility, to create that affordable price point. Because while we all want to, and you know, like we saw in the previous presentation, there is a lot of change happened in the way people think post-COVID. There is a lot of mindset changes. But what remains at the core of it is, yes, I want to be healthy. Well, yes, I want to make sure that I get the nutrition benefits. But what's more key is to be able to make it more accessible, to be able to uh, provide it at a price point which is accessible to the consumer. While we give you a better for you proposition, we give you a product which is better, expecting the consumer to come that length and to be able to actually share that pocket with us unless you create that belief in us is not going to be possible. So while we, we ventured onto a taste first health forward proposition, I think what, uh, what was one of the key things that we kept in mind was affordable price point and accessibility. Another thing which starkly comes across on these slides Usually when you see health food products which are tasty, you will see it at the nature's baskets, you'll see it at the food halls of the world, right? While they look absolutely encouraging, but how many times are we okay to go to a food hall, run a 3,000 rupee bill and go back there to, you know, to kind of, um, to be able to refill our grocery baskets? It's not very conducive. Where you truly are meeting the consumer, where you're truly bringing about a change is when you are available at the Kirana store next to their house. In formats, where you're not expecting the Kirana store guy who's trying to make his ends meet to come and hang your products. So he's, I mean, like I could spend 15 minutes talking to you about benefits of millets. That's not the proposition that he's selling to the consumer. What he is selling to the consumer is, matlab ye sare options hai, ab aap le lo. The job of making it attractive, the job of making sure that it's visible, the job of making sure that it looks as attractive as another competition product and is clearing taste and is appetizing, that's where we come in and that's where agility comes into place and marries the health first uh, taste forward proposition. And so if you go to stores today, I mean, as I will take you through the slides, we started off thinking that yes, you know, our place is in modern trade stores, e-com is the next thing to be, D2C is very cool. 
but really where is the consumer shopping the consumer is shopping in that mom and pop store next to your house and that's where you really need to go and meet the consumer because we truly believe that you do not ask the consumer to make a shift for what you what you're doing you go into their lives you attach yourself and you become a part of the shift that they want you to make and for that what's even more important to be available in the length and breadth of the country and today when we started off we were in 19000 stores in 2021 today we are available in across 5 lakh stores across the country and for us what really touches our heart that when we see somebody in pulwama a sales guy sending us a photo saying that madam milat to idhar bhi hai and that's when you know you're making a dent in the way the country is going to eat you're truly going to make it sustainable you're truly going to walk the talk and that's something which is extremely important this was a very interesting video i'm not going to take your time to play it but when i had a sales guy who used to work with me many years ago and he went to his hometown and he recorded a video and sent to me talking about millets and talking about how you know mr pm is talking about millets and it was nice to see where we set out on a journey you know 8 years back where we did not know how will we talk to people about the regionality of millets matlab west mein isko nachni bolte hai south mein isko ragi bolte hai east mein usko mandwa bolte hai how are we going to do that education but today when we see it's come mainstream where even a small little store guy in orissa says ha madam ye to millet hai and that's when you know that you know we will be able to bring about that change and it's important for us to adopt our age old traditions acha bhaiya ye jaise hum aapko abhi ragi bites taste kar rahe hain kaisa laga aapko bahut hi behtarin taste hai matlab ragi ka madhwa ka bana hua hai to bachcho ke liye madhwa ka bana hua tha ragi hai to bahut zyada to aaj ke jo was a sales guy you took a video of a retailer in india to sari mein benefit dega lekin maida ka to adam ye hai so while we were making millet school one of the categories that we ventured into and which was uh, is into the kids category like i told you all when you're talking to kids you have to lure a child into it we are not a generation where you can give a child a piece of cardboard or a bowl of food and the child is going to eat it it's important to bring them into your franchise it's truly important to bring that cool factor in that child's life and that's what we felt was the monster doing for us our monster cruncha mancha where we took him to various touch points so we have a very very popular saying at soulful for our ragi bites is the mother outside and the child inside and it's that dichotomy why the mother outside because ragi the benefits of ragi no maida 2x calcium it's what the mother understands the cream filling the chocolate the vanilla the strawberry is what the child understands it's that blend where you make that mother child relationship less hectic you make it more beautiful you make those mornings a lot more stress free and then you bring a little monster in who's an alibi between the child and the mother and you create that relationship between them these were avenues that we took to make millets to make this grain to make this super grain which is indigenous age old way more cooler way more appetizing fun absolutely like you know the child wants to look at the pack and says that why we go even one step further with kids right while with adults it's taste first with kids it's also about how luring is it how attracted are they and we said you know when you're talking about bringing an indigenous grain ba back i don't need frozen i don't need mickey mouse let's build our own mascots let's make them more lovable and that was one of our first steps to making millet school down 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 ekor isme ragi hai sirf iske yani no junk isme chocolate hai na isliye yani more fun ragi ka calcium दाल का प्रोटीन और चॉकलेट की यमीनेस से भरा सोलफुल रागी बाइट्स द गुड बाइट्स नाउ विद अ फ्री मस्टर टिन बॉक्स सोलफुल एंड देन व्हेन वी स्टार्टेड टॉकिंग टू द यंग एडल्ट्स इट वाज अगेन इंपॉर्टेंट टू गो इनटू देयर लाइफ्स टू मेक दिस मिलेट्स स्कूल फॉर देम एज़ वेल टू बी एबल टू रीच आउट एट टच पॉइंट्स वेयर दे गो अगेन इन फॉर्मेट्स व्हिच दे अंडरस्टैंड यू नो लोर देम थ्रू सोशल मीडिया talk about smoothie as a format talk about various influencers reach out to the key opinion leaders who actually influence their life so the journey of taking this ancient grain and actually making it cool while there is a lot of goodness in the grain there's a lot of truth about how it is going to be able to make a difference in the way our country eats it's going to make a difference to the farmer it is that smart grain which is going to create a generation of a difference what was key was to the consumer to not make it that hectic 
to simplify the whole process and where Tata Soulful genuinely lands at that point where it is millets are a great proposition, but how do we make millet simple? How do we make it accessible? How do we make it affordable? How do we make it tasty? And how do we make it cool? So this is a, one of the examples of how you know, we take these millets, make it cool. So when you take millets and you talk to a consumer, you do not talk to them about how millets are you know, high in calcium, high in protein. You talk to them in what is it that they are seeking for. For example, millets, when added to any of our products, makes it a lot more crunchier. And that is what the consumer seeks. The pure consumer insight is they wanted a crunchier snack. In India, there is no kid snack for the age group of 4 to 12 years. You get potato chips, you get kurkure, you get extruded snacks, but who is catering to that 4 to 12 years? And something which is chocolatey but yet healthy, less sugar, the mother knows she needs it, the child is okay to eat it, but it has to be brought about in a way where we can seamlessly fit into our life. So while we have the benefits of millets, while we talk about the crunch which lures the child, no junk is important because that's what the school is saying and the mother is saying. And then the whole chocolatey appetizing appeal bridges that gap from taking this indigenous grain and making it cool and packaging it the right way for the consumer. I'll just show you a couple of films which will tell you how we customize this grain, the proposition of this grain into various products and customize it for the insight that we get from the consumers in this category. Rahul, Rahul. Chocolatey. Tata soulful. No maida. Choco. Crunchy, crunchy, chocolatey. Choco, choco, chocolatey. Choco, choco, chocolatey. Soft, crunchy grains ki shakti. Aur ghe sara yummy chocolate. Tata soulful, ragi bites. No junk, all crunch. Oof. Looks to dekho. Ek dam must. Pretty good taste too, huh? Isse better milna to. Main to Tata Soulful Millet Newsly ki baat kar rahi thi. Wholesome grains, 25% crunchy millets, chunky fruits and nut. Tata Soulful Millet Newsly, better crunch, wholesome munch. While this was for a more NCCS. Aye, kuch khane ko. What? What? Hmm, not tasty. क्या है? Masala oats. इतना non sticky? Impossible. सिर्फ masala oats नहीं. Tata Soulful Masala Oats Plus. Oats Plus 25% crunchy millets, 100% real veggies और देसी मसाले. Tata Soulful Masala Oats Plus. Non sticky must taste जबरदस्त. So you can see here how we have tailored the communication or the positioning or the proposition for different consumers. Where we are talking about Masala Oats Plus, which is a 15 rupee product. It talks about that beautiful banter between the husband and the wife. And the proposition is not better crunch wholesome munch. It's non-sticky munch, taste zabardas. And that's what the consumer wants to hear. It's all about taste, but you craft the lines in their, in their world. While when you're talking about muesli, which is a more evolved consumer who's having breakfast, who feels that you know there is some aspiration that he had in life and now he's evolved and now he's a muesli consumer having better ingredients, not with competition brand, which is cheaper, but the ingredients are not that great. There you show the beautiful banter where today's generation, an early jobber, a live-in couple has, and how they respect each other, and how this product and the entire benefit story becomes the center part of it. If you notice, at no part in any of our ads, we are talking about millets, we're talking about saving water, we're talking about saving farmer, none of those things. But at the same time, what we take is we take the benefits of these indigenous grains, you know, work through our agility, make it cool, and make it more relevant to the consumer. So on that note, I would leave you with the thought of what is the smart food for the smart generation. Thank you so much for your time, and uh, all the best for the next series of sessions. <laughs>